Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. The other day we put out a video with the fastest SSD setup ever, and uh, although the numbers were really impressive, it really got me thinking. That was a semi-practical setup. What if we put together a setup that wasn't so practical? Could we actually go faster? Let's find out. All right, now there's a little bit of a story to this. Last night I was laying in bed and I was, I was trying to count how many Gen 4 one terabyte SSDs we actually had. And I was like, oh, we have eight of them. Hmm, I wonder if we should uh, revisit what we did the other day, but do RAID 0 across eight drives. And then I thought to myself, do I have another add-in card to do this? And it turns out I actually had another one from an MSI TRX40 board. So what we decided to do was RAID 0 with eight drives to see how fast we can go. Because in my experience with storage, more drives in RAID 0 means more speed. I'll quickly summarize how this works. Again, if you haven't seen the original video, you can also uh, check that out up there if you haven't yet. But basically the way this works is it splits PCIe lanes out into four devices from a single 16 time slot. You can only do this really at the moment with Gen 4 with Threadripper. You can't really do it with X570. It just doesn't have enough PCIe lanes and most motherboards aren't actually designed to do this correctly. So basically what we did is we moved the GPU down from the top slot into the bottom slot and we got the MSI card. We populated it with a bunch of drives. Now this is a bit of a a mix and mash of drives. I had three Fire CUDA 520s and one more one terabyte Sprint drive. The good thing about all this is all of these drives use the same physical NVMe controller. So we shouldn't have any compatibility issues. The only differences we're gonna see here is with the flash memory itself. But other than that, they're looking like they're pretty identical drives. We've actually done a video covering the uh, similarities between both of these drives. You can also check that out up there. They're basically the same drive, just a few little firmware differences. And basically what we did is we put the MSI card in the top slot, changed the bifurcation mode to 4x4x4x4, four by four by four by four, and then we deleted the 4 terabyte RAID that we created before. We then went ahead and created a new 8 terabyte RAID. And again, what you need to do is preload the drivers in the Windows pre-installation environment. Now, I actually went back and tested it with AMD's package for the driver installation post-install again with this setup. Before we did everything, it does not work. You need to use the pre-installation environment to install these drivers. And just in regard to that as well, we got a couple comments with people saying that uh, with their Windows 10 installer, the RAID driver was preloaded. I downloaded a new image of Windows 10 Enterprise 2004. No dice, it didn't work. I still had to preload the drivers with that. So this bench is actually running a later version of Windows now with the drivers preloaded. Anyway, continuing with that, you have to load the three drivers in a specific order again, same as we did in the last video, and away we go. And I actually tried to install Windows to the RAID like I did with the original setup, but we ran into a couple problems. The first problem was it wasn't formatting the drive or, well, I thought it wasn't formatting the drive. The reality is it was taking about half an hour to 40 minutes to format the volume, which is fine. Uh, I found this out later, which I'm gonna show you guys and explain a little bit later in the video. And other than that, it worked. All I had to do was actually pull out a SATA uh, SSD and plug it in and install Windows to that with the drivers preloaded on that. It actually makes it a bit more flexible. So I had an NVMe that I was installing Windows to in this system initially to do this task so it could be a bit more portable. But the problem we're having was in the BIOS when you enable NVMe RAID, it still wants to use it as a non-RAID volume but through the RAID controller which can cause issues with the preloaded drivers. But if we install it to SATA which doesn't use any RAID mode in this BIOS, we're good to go. So it all worked and it all worked out. It was a little bit more tinkering than last time, but we, we got there. Anyway, so what I had to do next was then install Windows, do all that stuff. And this is where we ran into one of the issues with this setup. Now, as I mentioned, this isn't really a practical setup. There is no use case on earth where you'd actually want to do this. But what we had to do to get this to work was format the drive and wait because when we tried to install Windows directly to the RAID volume, when it's doing the initial setup process in the Windows installer, it would just hang on 0%. Now I thought this was 
it crashing, so and I didn't want to waste any time. But what I did is I hit format on the volume in Windows, post install, I went and ate some lunch, I came back, and the volume was formatted. So yeah, there was a little bit of uh, impatience on my behalf, but it ended up formatting and we were good to go. So without further ado, let's see how much faster this is than the original four drive, four terabyte setup. Let's have a look at those numbers. Like with the last video, if these graphs are moving a little bit too fast for your eyes, there's a magical little button down the bottom called pause. You can use that to stop the video at any point in time to have a closer look at any of the numbers so you don't get confused about what's going on here. And speaking about what's going on here, what we're seeing is adding four more drives does increase the throughput for that sequential read and write performance. However, again, it is actually a lot worse for those random read and write operations, which is no surprise really given that when you actually add more PCIe devices, you're increasing the latency because you're splitting the lanes even more than you were before. There's only so much the chipset can do in this situation, and that is the trade-off. You add latency, See, therefore you reduce the random read and write performance. And I mentioned this a little bit later in the video as well. What we're seeing here is we're hitting a hard performance ceiling. There is nothing more we can do to get any more throughput with this setup. That's it. That's a wrap. That's all we can that's all we can do with this hardware. Now, we did try this with Linux as well and we are getting the same type of performance. So, it's nothing to do with Windows and the Windows kernel. It's nothing to do with Linux. It is a physical limitation of the hardware itself. Again, I wish I had some proper RAID controllers with like rather the RAID add-in cards with some RAID controllers on the card, which we can control, which have cache, which will be able to give us even more throughput. But the reality is that hardware is very, very expensive and not very easy to come by. I might put my feelers out and see if we can try and get some proper RAID cards to do this with. But for now, this is the best solution and the best way to do this. However, as I mentioned in the last video, it is cool, it is fun, but it is stupidly expensive and I do not recommend doing something like this. This is basically just to flex and just to see how fast we can go. There's no real world use case other than in the data center and the data center solutions are way more elegant than this. This is a fairly janky setup. Okay, the numbers are pretty impressive, but there are a few things to note with RAID 0 and NVMe and PCIe Gen 4. There are diminishing returns. So you can get to the point where you can keep adding drives to go faster and faster, but you're hitting a performance ceiling. And it's nothing to do with Windows. I did tinker around with doing this in Linux as well. We, ha we hit the same roadblock and we're maxing out at around, well, sequentially, at about 18 gigs read and about 20 gigs write. And that's like the ceiling, the hard ceiling. There's nothing more we can do about it. Even if we change the cache mode on the controller, nothing. We're just hitting that performance ceiling. So is this type of setup something you should consider doing yourself? Absolutely not. It's a complete waste of PCIe slots. Is it cool to see how far something can go? Absolutely, I love tinkering. It's kind of just like a flex at this point to see how fast we can make it go. I was just, out of anything, I was more interested and curious to see how fast RAID 0 with PCIe Gen 4 would go if we had the opportunity to add more drives, which we did. And yeah, as, as you can see, the returns are fairly diminishing. We actually lost random performance, which is 
to be expected because you're adding more drive, so there's more latency between all of the PCIe lanes. But other than that, it is still pretty darn impressive. So yeah, if you were to do something like this, I would not suggest doing this um, for like a daily driver setup. It is cool to tinker with, but overall, I would not be using a setup like this. You just, you're basically just wasting a whole motherboard and yeah, it just turns into a real real estate thing. And we did get some questions about the thermals for these drives. They're to be expected, like with running with any heatsink, it's actively cooled, so they run a lot cooler. There's no thermal throttling happening here. We did test for that. But yeah, there's just nothing really to report, which is why I didn't talk about it in the original video. It's just not that interesting. Anyways, guys, if you like this video and you like the music I made here, I make all the music, obviously, it's available over on our Patreon. And if you like the video, hit the like button, hit subscribe. We're almost at 100,000 subscribers, ladies and gents. Help us get there. By the time this video out, comes out, rather, we should be at like 95,000 subscribers or something crazy like that. If you hated the video, hit the dislike button twice. And yeah, once again, thank you so very much for watching. I'm your boy, Nick, with Gear Seekers. You peak. We seek, and I hope you guys learned a little something about RAID 0 with eight drives. I I'm sorry, this is just like a, a complete, like I, I was, wasn't really gonna make a video today, but I was just wanting to tinker with something, and I thought this was interesting enough to make a whole video about, considering we actually beat the speeds that we did with the last fastest SSD setup ever, with a catch. And the catch is, the random read and write performance is absolutely horrendous. But the sequential speeds are really, really fast. And if you're looking to just beat some benchmarks and get some high numbers, those are the numbers you're looking for, and they're pretty darn impressive. Anyways, thanks for watching.